Hello and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Vladimir Petrov. I'm from a company called Vionix. Vionix is based in London and we're, we're doing architectural visualizations and architectural design. Uh, so today I'll be showing you how to, to create a very ordinary SOM 1960s office tower using Rhino and Grasshopper. And the reason we, we want to do a tutorial like this and later use this solution, this Rhino solution, uh, in our work is that quite often we, we need to build contexts where our very, very cool buildings will be placed in. So we need a really quick and versatile, flexible solution where you know, having just a few parameters, we can control the height of the tower, the distance between the mullions, the thickness of the mullions, floor to floor height, and well, even the the rooftop objects and their randomness. Okay, let's get started. Open a new file, and. Uh, Let's quickly create a rectangle in the top view in Rhino. We're just going to serve us as a as the base of the outline of the floor plates for the for the tower. All right, let's select the curve and then explode it and get the the edges defined. What I want to do is get get the first point, zero zero point of the of the rectangle, and create a, a line going up, which will define the the height of our tower. So let's plug in the, the z vector and a slider. Set it to integer okay let's go at the geometry element and select selecting the curve plug it into the I try to build build a the floor plates division. That's why we plug in divide length element. Let's let's rename it floor to floor height. And this is the, the overall tower height. The other slider. So moving the slider, I can see the distance between the floor plates changing. Now let's get extrusion modifier and extrude this, this curve and cap it and switch off the extrusions preview. We want to be able to, to control the the, the slab thickness, that's why we, we put into the extrusion element a Z vector together with a slider. Alright, now we want to copy all the floor plates on each and every point along this, this curve, vertical curve. And voila, there are all our fla floor plates. And modifying the floor to floor height, but keeping the overall height of the building, the tower, you can see that the you know the, the program adds extra extra floors. What we do now next is dividing the the length of the of the perimeter. 
and the reason for doing that is that I want to do to put some some mullions along the facade around our building. Right, let's rename it quickly. I'll put a dispatch element because we want to split the elements into groups. Alright, so we have and this in this case the the X and Y elements split into two groups. We we'll rename them Malian size, Malian size B. This will be the our sliders that will define the the size of the of the Malians in both directions. Right, let's plug them into the rectangles we will build at an every point along the surface. Along the perimeter, I mean. <coughs> and swapping the X and Y in the second in the second element, we can make them, you know, having the same size. Uh, all elements having the same size, but aligned properly into the both axes. Now let's put some extrusion to it. And a z-vector. Let's determine the length of the of the vertical line. Actually, I think that's the floor to floor height, and multiplying it by the number of floors, we can get the the overall height of the mullions. Now as you can see here we've got one one floor to, to high. To reduce this so I'll use this this very simple mathematical arithmetical formula. Which will say the total number of floors minus one multiplied by the floor to floor height. And this will give us the the, the total the overall height of, of the mullets. Right, next step. I would create a rectangular grid, which I'll be using to to create um, an array of array of, of points, and on these points I will be copying columns. So I want to, to show some interior structure of the building. Let's not to avoid it looking totally, you know, transparency through. Now I'm trying to get to match the overall uh, the size of the grid to match the my rectangle, the size of the rectangle. I want to get lines in both directions, which are kind of my grid grid lines, structural grid lines. And let's say divide the distance between them. I'll put a slider, have some some distance defined by them, dispatch the you know, splitting again the, the X and Y lines into two groups. Rename it gently. And reduce the, the floating point digits to, to the second grade. And as well, what is very important to keep the 
you know the the size the grid size in within reasonable limits meaning 2.4 to 4.8 let's say structural uh, which is as a structural size now we're offset let's try this offset the lines and move them a bit so what I want to avoid is <coughs> the line the sorry the the columns appearing from the facade I kind of I want them a little bit recessed to the inside all right so uh, I think what happens if I move them with a certain certain size let's say 1.8 towards the, the inside of the building and mm, merge them actually it might make more sense I try this divide the is divide distance element connected to the to a slider select the upper limit delete the previous one don't need this effect either I think it might make more sense using the Divide at all. Let's rename it the number of columns. I guess, could, uh, I guess just setting up the number of columns in the building without paying too much attention about the grid lines and so. the divide once again and get it into the other direction then create the lines obviously we get a little bit of a mess if we revert it should be fine now like this get them both the number of the columns copied copy the whole group and connect it to the other dispatch get the column number in the other direction hook to another to separate slider so we can kind of regulate as you see the other columns in X and in Y direction Let's arrange a little bit closer and get the intersection of these two lines right short at least one two so let's try the second option let's put the current object And reverse it. The last game, of course. Copying the whole group, and that's what we'll be actually intersecting, because we don't want to get. Actually, we want to get rid of the points along the facade. This might make more sense. Now we have nice rectangles that are going to be our structural columns. Again, we create a slider, which which is going to regulate the the size of the internal structural elements <laughs> the columns I mean all right now they're square because they're hooked into X and Y slots if I extrude them and get the get the height from the from the mullion height using the same algorithm as before can get the proper height of the columns not sticking over the overall building height let's copy the dispatch once again and dispatch it even more so we can kind of what we want to, to have control on each of these four lines that form our rectangle separately 
So I copy it four times and connect it to each of the outputs of the two dis dispatch elements. Okay. And the reason for doing that is very simple. This is a very rectangular building so I currently see, but I want more flexibility, kind of a drawing a, a random um, four-point polygon, polygon line, and you know, being able to later when I generate my geometry, be able to to get just any any size and any shape of buildings. Okay, now I'm aligning the mullions to the uh, to the separate lines that defined our uh, our envelope, the envelope of the building. And let's restructure it a bit so it looks nice and easy to, to navigate through the scene. I'll copy it obviously and add uh, the XY plane and with a with a line element and copy them across to all four rectangles. <laughs> All right. Obviously, some of them are, are facing the, you know, the, the narrow sides of the mullions are not properly aligned. That's why I just what I need to do is just swap the X and Y sliders in, in two of the rectangles with the X and Y slots. Perfect, just perfect. We're getting there. <laughs> the same thing aligned with the columns. Actually, it doesn't make much sense having rect rectangular columns in, in this situation, so I'd rather have a circle which is, you know, the circle is a is a neutral form. Uh, so it's going to save me some trouble aligning it, and besides, you know, I have too many individual lines that are not parallel to each other. I put a slider that's going to control the will be controlling the, the radius of the of the columns. And again we need to extrude them. Let's wireframe it first. It's getting a little bit too much to tangling. Entangled. So now I'll offset the the perimeter line once again and hook it to a slider. And what I'm planning of doing is to get the, the spandrels working, some spandrels. La, 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 la. So I put a limit between 20 centimeters and 60 centimeters for the time being. I might decide to change it later, but let's say that's the maximum wall thickness I, I need, I want to have. And merge it with the uh, with original, original supply and then extrude it. And uh, I want as well to be able to control the spandrel height. So I'll put another sc another slider to it. Well, obviously I'm I miss the the Z vector. Let's let's stick it in. Now I want to switch to shaded mode. Another a cap modifier. What we see is that it doesn't quite work. You know, it's cupping all the way through the both the both splines. Let's try something else. I'll put a planner, creating a planner surface, and then extrude it. Still doesn't work. Hmm, too bad. Let's try it another thing. The difference between the lines, kind of a boolean operation between the uh, the ex the um, the exterior line and the, the interior offset. Okay, that seems to work fine. Now I'll add addition, as I want to be measuring the spandrel height from the floor height, 
and from the floor bottom so I need to add the, add the floor height towards the spandrel height works perfect <coughs> So now what I've done is copying all the spandrels, the bottom spandrels, all the way up the building. And zooming out, I see that I got one element too much. So that that's why I'll select the last element and set it to zero. So yeah, selecting the last element, then list inverted. And Actually, the other right, yeah, revert needs to go between the move and cal e, cal i. Let's call it the top spandrels. Top meaning starting from the from the top of the floor slabs. So now I have the, after reversing it, I have the one element too much, which is at the bottom, and we can easily exclude that, that one. Copying the whole, whole lot, we can get the, the spandrels hanging from the, from the ceiling, so to say, in a separate group, separate entity. And now I'll copy the slider and rename it because I want it to have control of the height of the, of the top or rather the bottom. I'm losing already the track but of the, of the other spandrels. Okay, it seems to work fine. <coughs> now, what we need to do is fill in the gap between the spandrels and this would be the, the glazing glazing paints. Initially I was thinking of putting a, a slider but you know it's better to, to reduce all these elements to a minimum and besides if we just say that the thickness of the glass is two centimeters that should more or less correspond to reality. Same the same thing we offset it then extract kind of boolean the outside the inside line from the outside offset and then extrude it and stick it, stick a normal vect vector into it. Now, the problem is getting the right height of the, the glazing. This is a little bit of a, a issue that we need to solve right now. And uh, hooking it to the Spandrel heights. Yeah, it seems to be moving up together with the spandrel. Now obviously we can we can move it up so it lies at the top of the, the spandrel, not at the bottom as it is currently. So I need a addition adding element, simple arithmetical operation. And we want it to move kind of a between two extremes, zero and one. Let's say the, the size of the height of the you know the glazing. And in one slot A we'll have to put a visual basic simple script with adding three three elements. And the next so I think we'll, we need to input all the... I've lost the track a bit, but in one of them we're inputting the floor slab, the, the, fl the floor slab thickness, you know, the, the bottom and the, and the top spandrels heights. And then in the code, we'll input the simple equation if 0 0.2 equals is equal or bigger than than y, then 
the output A is 0, else the output A equals X. This will secure that the glass glazing stays within limits between the top and the bottom spandrel, not interfering, intersecting with them, which is very important to create a very clean and nice geometry which will make our rendering life much easier. Alright, so it seems kind of a to work. Still needs a little bit a bit more tweaks. And as you can see it follows the the top the top spandrel. But I call bottom for some reason. <laughs> but what we need to do is make it follow the the lower slab. The lower spandrel in fact. So moving it up with a again with a sip, simple um, minus value in this case should do the job, and the minus will be the, the slab thickness, I think, isn't it? What we do now is moving just the just the glazing first. Uh -oh, again, we need to put a to connect it to a vector. And this vector will get into the get connected to the minus uh, minus value between the two the two values of the, the height of the spandrel and the is the other one. Now extruded the thing. Seems to work fine. So I want to reduce now the overall height of the glazing because it seems to to bang into the floor plates. There might be easier way of doing this, I suppose even in VB actual basic script, but that's the way I found so far. And it works for me alright. Now copy it all using the, the move element copy all the all the glazing paints up the tower. Again the same thing I want to get rid of the of the, the extra glazing on top using the the cow invert. And I'm just testing all the elements I've got where they they look fine. Maybe the, the easiest way would be baking them at some point and rendering the geometry to see how it looks. Seems to be uh, fine. Seems to work fine. So far, so good. I'm playing with the, with the heights, as you see, and I want to test it. There is this nice remote control panel in, in Rhino that kind of helps you combine all the sliders you have in the scene in one single interface, in one single panel. But unfortunately, as you might have noticed, in the more recent versions there's some bug of Rhino, so it doesn't work. Well, it's a pity as later in production we'll have to, to do them one by one, surfing for our scene unless they fix it, God knows when, in the later releases. Uh, but now next to the, let's move to the next element, which would be now creating the Boarding, which will give some some extra few extra element to our building, the crowning element, and I want to look it to look different from the from the spandrels. Obviously, have a different thickness. Again, offsetting the the initial line, polyline, and then again uh, difference operation between two splines, extrusion. 
again missing my vector, inserting the z vector, and I introduce the slider, which will, you know, give me some flexibility at the height. And I set the thickness to 0 0.25 at, the, at this boarding. You might, if you want, you can put an extra. Uh oh, a crash. Okay, continuing from where we stopped last time. So what I need to do now, after extruding it, of course, I want to move it up in the correct position on the building top. And for that reason, again, we need to do some some very simple formula, arithmetical formula. You know, adding, subtracting the heights which in this time in this case they are not constants, they're you know the sliders. So I need to plug the sliders into this function element, function button. And what I do is multiply x by y, which will give me the you know the number of floor plates by by the floor to floor height. But actually I want one element less under that, one floor less, and that's what you've got. Now the, the roofing boarding height, we can set as much as we want, but what I'll do now, I'll send it to 0 0.5, no. I'll do it in a clever way, in a way. I want to set it to, to one centimeter as a minimum, but this one centimeter will be uh, just the minimum sticking from the from the Branch of the of my top floor plate building. That's why I'll I'll add the roof, uh, the, the floor slab, plus this you know this 0 0.1 centimeter as a minimum. Now something I I decided now on the fly I want to. To create a base for my tower, not just a tower sticking out of nothing, and that you don't have buildings like this. But you know, usually I have a base, base which is the lobby, the entrance hall. You know, some shopping could be or whatever it is. Most of the 1960s towers do have, uh, you know, a basement like this. So that's why I'll move all the elements with a with a slider attached to it and unfortunately I'll have to reconnect all the all, all the lines streaming out of the geometry element being the in our case being the the perimeter line of the building. That's what I'm doing currently currently and then in the end I'll delete the, the previous geometry element I, I used. The movie is a little bit speed up, as you probably notice. I'm not so quick anyway. But you know, to avoid all this this long waiting and you know, to make it just shorter, you can pause it if, if it's too quick to you and go step by step. Now back to our model, moving the tower above, I call it above ground distance slider, I can, you know, modify the the height of the building above ground. And I'll use this height to to put a base, introduce a base base inside, which is gonna be kind of at the same tower I have on top, but slightly, just very gently slightly different from the from the top tower. So now I'm offsetting you know we need a bonding element between our main tower and the base of the tower, which I call GF ground floor recess. And extrusion, again, I do the same mistake not, mis mistake not sticking it into the Z vector. Okay, so it looks fine. 
as well the, the height of the tower. I might decide to, to call it a day and you know, yes, just the tower as it is now, it still might work fine. Especially after 9-11 you get, you know, all these security measures, so towers become, the base of the towers become quite often like in the, you know, in the in the New York Tower, the SOM Tower. It's just a concrete block, concrete base with a few windows and entrance. But if you decide to go the longer way and create it, you know, the more classical base, then we need another curve, which will be the, the base curve, the curve of the the base profile, and now what I'm doing is extruding the, the floor plates. But as I said, actually lots of the elements in the upper part of, of the building will be similar or even identical. That's why... Let me think first. I think I should extrude the, the floor plates. Let's get this relation working between the base and the and that floors properly. Okay, I'm dividing lengths. I'm gonna leave kind of a six, seven meters floor to floor height as a maximum, as the lobby is usually a bit higher than the you know the the usual upper floors. Another slider between four and eighteen meters. That's going to be the you know, the minimum to maximum height of the of the base. And then a move modifier will will secure the the properly copying of all the elements. Well, now they're way too high. I need to connect to the other T, to the smaller T, in the correct position. But as you can see, the, the upper part of the tower, the actual tower, is intersecting the, you know, the, the, the base floor plates, which we need to take care of. But let's copy the, the, whole, the whole lot we've got so far. It's going to be as I said before, it's going to form our base of the tower and delete just the elements we don't need. Might be actually the easiest way, certainly, rather than going all the way, you know, building and aligning all the, all the mullions. So we end up with two base, base profiles and later when we're generating our towers, we'll be you know, drawing F2 lines in plan, one we use to, to generate the base, the other the tower above. So I'll rename all, all the sliders appropriately to avoid any further confusions because too many sliders all of a sudden it's really confusing. You see the the whole the whole thing is getting really complicated and tangled in this spider net. Right, here up in the seven meters is a maximum four meters is a minimum. The floor to floor height is as you see moving the slider, it adds additional floors if I move the slider floor to floor height, I mean. Now we don't need to, to move the tower up, so we'll delete this element, I mean the tower base up, so delete the, the elements controlling it, controlling that operation. Let's 
It's a little bit of a boring exercise now. There's not much to explain about you know, reconnecting remaining and stuff. To, to arrange them a little bit, you know, separating the base from the from the tower, it gets really confusing. Uh, so this, all this is my bottom. This is the top. This is the bottom again. All right. La 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 la. La 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 la. All this can be deleted. Move it aside a bit. Now it's very important to structure your, your connections, your element properly because later when you come, you need to come back later, let's say weeks or months later, you won't be able to find the, the elements so easy, so easily. And now I want to move the tower top you know, at the at the height that. Will be connected to the uh, via function to the base to the height of the base of the tower. It's very entangling definitions, but the base plus this recess bit in the middle. So adding these bits into a nice little formula, we'll get the uh, the distance we need to move to move our Tower, in a way. So you know, if I move the overall height of the slab of the, sorry, a bit tight, the 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 height of the base, I want the tower and the recess in between to move accordingly. All right, let's put the upper limit to eight. So the tower stock stick only eight meters above the above the roof of the of the base of the base building. Now there's some some things that are not quite right with the extrusion of the of the recessed bit. Just a simple box but come come to it later. Uh, again I need to separate all my elements nicely visually and move them a little bit further to the right so I can find them, easily find them later when I need to, you know, to add more elements to them or just generate the geometry, the final geometry. Okay. I'm doing a switching off all the elements that are not not final. It has all the other other functions that helped us to build our results so far. As they start interfering with the with the final geometry. A little bit of an aesthetic ex exercise involved, nicely arranging all the elements. Just when we start connecting them to the geometry, baking outputs, it might be a little bit difficult to find all, the, all of them and properly connect them. Now, back to the to my recessed block. I want to move it up in the same distance that you know um, I'm generating the tower base height. That seems to be sitting nicely on the on the roof of the tower base. I'm missing the, the glazing, the glass panes. For some reason, is that so? 
Yeah. Uh, well, that generated gain in using the, the offsets. The difference between the offset and the original curve will give us the, the planar the polygon, which we're going to extrude it. And what we need to do is, of course, define the height, which we already have from before, from the mullions. And it's, it's almost, almost nice. We need to, to minus it to get the height minus the height of the, the floor plates, isn't it? That's good. Nice. So what's next? Checking all the elements now. Right, it might again not be the, the quickest solution, but I wanted to the top plane defined the roof of the of the tower itself. And I want to subdivide it into U and V grid points. And I'll be using these points with some random modifier. I call it random element uh, to to generate points which I'll be using this randomly generated points or randomly selected points rather to to copy some rooftop objects which will be you know this installation bits the, the cooling the heating things and how the appliances you put on, on the roof of the building just to add some extra details using the jitter modifier here and playing a little bit with the the boolean values. Oops. Well, it seemed to fall in a row. Quite happy with that. This could work. Subdivision in both directions. Give me a little bit more control. Up. Name them accordingly. All right, I want to offset it minus one meter, one and a half. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want all my elements all my points to appear uh, within one and a half meter boundary from the from the rooftop boarding roof boarding I don't want to intercept it in it anyway. So I'll get some random seed thing slider. Playing with it I can get some you know some randomness. The on the other hand, it might not be the, the best solution. Let's try something else. I want to split all the all four lines and giving them the item values of doesn't appear for some reason here in the viewport. Maybe it's too quick. From first one gets I value of zero, the second one I value of one, the third two, and the fourth I value of three. And then I connect all of these items to a surface, four point surface. Yeah, they need to be connected from the P port to the point port. And I get the evaluation element evaluating the surface. And I'll stick all connected to a point. Uh, point created by its x, y, z coordinates and in there x and y x and y output some random randomizing elements 
and get some sliders in the in the number value in the seed value as well now I want actually to, to get them appearing on the on the surface I need to repama uh, different difficult word repametrize reparametrize it all right okay, so I have them all copied along the surface now I want to, to align them to the let's say to two of the four lines that form the perimeter of the floor plates of our building and create a vector based on two points align planes and this way I'm going to align them so no matter how I I redraw my my profile building profile of the building. They should should be following two of them. Now, from what I see here, I have too many, you know, too 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 many elements forming our too many links to the the, the final result. So, flattening it, I'll get rid of all of them and um, I'll create a rectangle again with random values in x and y it's going to be the, the profile the base profile for the for the rooftop objects right, uh, connected to a length object length numbering object which will give me the, the number of, of elements in both x and y based on the number of, of elements that number of points actually I created before now I want to scale them up a bit so um, I'll multiply it by, by 2 and x and y hiding some of the elements you can see what happens get some random play with the number of points let's make it a little bit more 36 and I'm not quite happy with the, with the proportions of the rectangle so let's multiply it by 3 by in x and by 2 in, in y dimension and 3 <coughs> a few times and we could get something like this which is kind of a so we need to extr extrude this well first of all I want to limit it from 0 0.1 to, to 1 the randomness of the, of the sizes let's put it 0 0.3 that's the boundary within which the, the element size will operate now I want to ext extrude them with some randomness again and I'll just pick one of the random elements that I used into let's say into the, to plug it into the x direction of the boxes right, we need some capping obviously box capping like this ah, just cap holes ok, perfect with our boxes and when we unhide all the elements previously hidden, we notice that the boxes kind of are sitting not in the right position. They're sitting, they're aligned with the bottom of the of the top floor plate. So we need to move them by a value of, uh, of the of the slab thickness, which we get from the from the slider floor to floor slab thickness. Let's move it into the, the position closer to the end result. So and we can hide the previous modifiers. Nice. So. not 
quite happy as you see as you can see with a height of this recessed body connection body in wireframe, frame you, can, you could see that it's sticking into the tower above so I had to recalculate the, the height there's a combination between the you know the height of the of the three three main major elements of the of the building now what I do is smashing all my all my geometry all my nerve geometry preparing it for baking basically and I want to have control of the number of polygons I'm outputting so sometimes you can get nice nasty and predictable not nice nasty and predictable results without paying attention to the outputs and I'll copy this mesh modifier mesh elements to all my you know all my individual elements of the building this somehow funky triangulation so let's try to change the, the grid size it seems to work fine we don't need so 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 much triangles so many triangles there. it's a little bit of a boring exercise obviously but it needs to be done I'll let you go through, through it with me now we get all the all the mullions shaping nicely and what I want to do using uh, a merge three three elements actually it won't quite use quite a work as I have four elements I want to merge all the mullions into one single entity that's why I'll I'll use to merge multiple and I want them as just one single output. Okay. Let's mesh those columns now. Rename it nicely and properly. Almost there. Still doing that same boring exercise, but it's gonna help me organize my scene in nice and clean in the end. And make my life navigating through the scene one day when I need to go back and modify the things much easier. Hopefully. The, the base malleons into one single entity moving them closer to each other That's enough. Let's arrange them slightly 
So the two, two elements of our tower are quite clearly, clearly separated and visible from each other. But now, not quite finished yet, I'm afraid. Okay, now what I'm going to do is using some pre-made plugin elements for Grasshopper programmed in C++ by a very talented guy called Giulio Percentino. And I'll open it using actually the tool called Bake Attributes. And what it does, with one click of the mouse, it bakes all my entire geometry of separate layers and separate colors, separate shading materials. It's just such a relief. Otherwise, if you have to do it one by one, it's going to be a nightmare. So I'm copying and pasting it into my scene. And I'll start connecting them. Pay attention to this bake with attributes button you're seeing here. It's very important that it stays always to false means switched off. The moment you, you change the boolean value to true, it, it bakes all your geometry. Once you've baked it, you need to reset it to false. Otherwise, you might get some undesirable results. What I'll do, I'll rename this My Layer Nodes button into Layer of Boarding, and as well that was the layer name, and that's uh, just the name. Uh, and delete the elements I don't really need, like the P width, the wires. Got slightly positioned nicely. And okay, what I'm going to do now is copy the whole, the whole group once again and connect it to my next output mesh sponge Scott. Then I'll rename it again. So I have a unique layer on which all my sponge objects will be placed into. Then as well, as you've seen, I've changed the color of it, giving it unique color and material. And the same with all the rest of my elements, really, now. Glazing. Well, it's slightly to the left. Again, this boring exercise that needs to be done, changing the colors, layer names, connecting to the mesh outputs. Yeah. If you're bored, just you can you can stop watching it from here on because it's going to be more or less the same until the end of this exercise. Really, renaming, grouping, and so on. Once we've done all this, just one single click of the mouse, of this boolean operator there, will guarantee that all our geometry is properly baked with unique, uniquely named layers and unique colors. Sweet. I'll be merging all all the mullions from the both parts of the building into one single. I don't really need them on separate layers and separate materials, so kind of a, a nice vertical column of, of merged operators is forming there. So I want to, to keep all the similar materials on, a, on the same layer. Okay. Okay. 
two more minutes, two more minutes to go. Go, 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 go. Let's crawl the, through this really, really quickly. You don't, it's no, no useful information. It's just a, it's a dunk exercise. It needs to be done. So boring, so boring. Anyway, you should know that we'll be putting in the, in the coming months more and more freebies, more and more tutorials relating related to you know computer graphics, 3D visualizations, architecture, parametric modeling. On our website, we have already plenty of free stuff you can download, cut out peoples, cut out people, trees, and so on. So don't forget to visit our website under www.bionics.com. And thank you for watching. My name was Vladimir Petrov. Thank you. Goodbye.